working <laughs> super fast. This year also marks the 50th anniversary of Title IX, the landmark law passed in 1972 that protects people from discrimination based on sex in education programs and activities. But simply passing the law wasn't enough. People had to fight to implement and enact that change. Fox Science Don Mitchell has more. Not to be able to play sports like the boys, that bothered me. I was just as good as the boys. Often I beat the boys. Barb Simonson Theobald went from not being able to play sports to becoming a first-hand recipient of Title IX's changes. She credits George Carter for changing her life. I was elated. This was what I wanted. This, I wanted to play real basketball. I wanted to play like the boys. And so the first day I was like, this is what I've been dreaming of all of my life. So when he became um, the coach, I said, now, now I finally am going to get the same opportunity as the boys. And it just op opened my eyes and my world. 81-year-old Coach Carter is a legend in Red Wing. He's been a teacher and a coach to both boys and girls for 60 years. And despite his humble, quiet demeanor, he's a powerful force, especially back in the 70s, supporting the newly passed Title IX. The title that I've been thankful we have it, but we should never have had it. It should have been equal the whole time. The whole time. Title IX was one thing, enforcing it was another. George said administrators were opposed then to anything female, and so he fought for equality right down to scheduling. The boys had games on one school night only, the girls two. Played on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The boys played Tuesday, Friday. And these kids would have flashlights on the bus to study. And we went to Old Town and Albert Lee on a Tuesday, Thursday, two school nights. And I approached all the superintendents and the athletic director about changing the schedule. We had some, a lot of opposition, but under the law, you couldn't do it. So we went to a Tuesday, Friday. Because mm -hmm. it was okay for the females to have to do their schoolwork two nights a week and basketball, right? Yeah, but not the really, guys. That was the attitude. In 1978, George coached the girls basketball team, which made a Cinderella run to the state tournament. Barb, the captain, known more for her defense than any scoring prowess, especially at the free throw line, became a powerhouse. But at that new Prague game, I came alive for whatever reason, higher power there. Um, and I won the game in overtime with free throws. Wow. And that's how we got to state. They didn't win a title, but they gained so much more. It was a fantastic time in my life, the happiest time of my life. And it made you who you are today. It made me who I am today. Because George believed in me, I believed I could do anything. Barb followed in George footsteps to his alma mater Bemidji State after high school. He even handed her scholarship application papers to pay for it. Barb went on to grad school and yes, like George, is now a teacher in Red Wing. All do, she says, to a man who believed women can do anything. Half of the minds in the country are as smart as the other half. That's where you start and don't, uh, disavow what they can do. So, yeah, George changed my life, totally. And I was just so excited to be able to be an athlete, and be a woman, and be a strong woman, and to have dreams of, for my life, um, and, and be able to achieve those. Don Mitchell, Fox 9 Sports. Oh, some really good looks at uh, yeah. the history of that. Progression of women's sports in Minnesota. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.